Praise the Lord, everybody. So good to see y'all here tonight. If you will stand with me at this time. Had such a good move of the Holy Ghost this morning. Ask that the Lord just continue that into tonight's service. If you will join me in prayer over that. Lord God, we thank you for another opportunity to come together as one mind, one body, and in one accord. Lord, we ask that your Holy Ghost would flow in this place. Lord, continue the work you did this morning into this evening. Lord, we are just calling upon your name just to have a mighty move of you in this place, Lord. Whatever we brought through those doors, that we would leave it there and just focus on you for this next little while, Lord. We ask that you would just move in this place. Every person that's in, in this building, Lord, or listening online, that they would be touched, that they would feel your presence presence, Lord, just envelop them. Oh, Lord, just move in a mighty way tonight as we give you glory and praise to your name, the name of Jesus, which is above every other name. Oh, let's give them a hand clap of praise tonight. Praise the Lord. Worship with us. Hallelujah.
let's give that to the Lord right now. Hallelujah, there's victory in the house tonight. Hallelujah, we serve a risen king. Amen, we are in his presence. He has no equal, he has no rival. Amen, he's the God of all. He's above all, in us all, and through us all. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise, amen. He's in this place tonight, hallelujah. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, amen. We are in basking in his glory, hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, amen. Woo, what a mighty God. What a mighty God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask that you stand, the ministry team, if you'd be, get ready, amen. We're going to be praying. Somebody needs prayer. Amen. But we know what God is able. Amen. Matter of fact, Isaiah 41 and 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea. I will help thee, yea. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. We serve a God who is able to do exceedingly above of all that we can ask and even think according to the power that works within us. Amen. He's a mighty God. Amen. Sister Megan is a she's needing prayer for Friday. She's being induced. Amen. So we want the she wanted to pray. We want the Lord to be with them, Amen. As she uh, as she goes through that, Amen. But we also have some other prayer requests, Amen. We need to continue to pray for Brother Bernie and his family, his mother and brother and sister. They all need a touch. Uh, I don't know how many here know Diana Reed from Calvary Church. She has been diagnosed with breast cancer. We need to lift her up, Amen. She handles a lot for the ladies' ministry in this section. Amen. And member Charles and Jennifer Spencer, they need a healing touch as well. Amen. The presence of the Lord is here. Amen. If you need prayer, amen. Megan's here. She's standing here. If you need prayer in your body, amen. If you need to stand in the gap, take up that hedge, amen, and stand in that gap for somebody, the Lord is here. He's here to answer that prayer. Amen. But there's every special unspoken. Let's lift up our hands right now. Let's go for it. For the Lord. Lord, we love and we praise you, Lord. We call upon that name which is above every name. Lord, knowing that you hold all power and authority over all things, Lord, just by the very mentioning of your name, Lord, we declare your glory. We declare your healing, Lord. We declare your salvation. Lord, we declare your victory in here today, Lord Jesus, over every situation, Lord Jesus. Bless those, Lord, that need healing, Lord. Bless those, Lord, that need provision, Lord, for those, Jesus, that need strength, Lord, on an everyday ba battle, Lord, as we wage, Lord, in your spirit. Lord, just touch and move and minister, Lord, in a mighty way, Lord. Lord, as we decrease and you increase, Lord, that your will be done, Lord, that your will be done. Not ours, Lord, but we cast all our cares upon you, Lord, giving ourselves to you here tonight, Lord Jesus. It's not by might, it's not by power, Lord, but it's by your spirit, Lord, for we stand upon your word that by your stripes we are healed, Lord. You are a healer, Lord. You are a deliverer, Lord. You are that way maker, Lord. We just praise you, Lord, and give you all honor and glory, Lord, here tonight, Lord. Crying out unto you, Lord. Move upon every special unspoken. Touch all those that are sick in body, Lord Jesus. Move, Lord, in a mighty way, Lord Jesus, in a way that only you can, Lord. Let us not miss, Lord, the hour of our visitation here tonight, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, you're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. We give you honor, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, send it on down. Lord, let your spirit move, Lord. Lord, as we cry out to you, Lord, touch, Lord. Move those mountains, Lord Jesus. We're crying out with just a little seed of faith, Lord, knowing that you are a mountain mover, a way maker, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Touch and strengthen us, Lord Jesus. Give us your direction, Lord. We pray, Lord, for this nation, Lord. We pray for our schools. We pray for our families, Lord. Let your will be done, Lord. We pray and plead your blood upon every home, Lord Jesus. Let your presence be felt in every home, Lord Jesus. Let your will be done, Lord. Yes, Lord, let your will be done in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the way, Lord. You are the truth. You are the life, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Declaring his glory and his victory in here tonight. Woo, 
what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Smile at your neighbors. You're being seated. What a presence of the Lord in this place. Ladies, after service, there'll be a quick meeting to get some uh, few questions for you uh, in the prayer room. See Sister Paula. On Tuesday, we have corporate prayer. There's also our fast day. Amen. Be a part of that. Amen. Wednesday, we have Bible study and kids power hour. Thursday, end time life group. Is it 630? Is that here at the church? Amen. Any questions? See Brother Banks. Amen for that. And Friday, Sunday school, we'll be having game night here at the church from 6 to 8. Amen. God is good. Amen. I'm excited about what God is doing, going to continue to do. Our ushers are going to come, and we're going to give unto the Lord. We're going to continue to worship him in our giving. Luke 6 and 38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with some, with the same measure, amen, that ye meet with, oh, it shall be measured again to you. Amen. The Lord is good. Lord, we love and we praise you, Lord, and thank you, Lord, for all that you do, Jesus. Thank you for being a provider, Lord, of all things, Lord. Just pray right now, Lord, that you bless each and every giver, Lord, let them multiply for the furtherance of your kingdom. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. How many is thankful that the Lord keeps giving you chances over and over and over again? I don't know about y'all, but... I've been saved time and time and time and time again. I mess up so much, but I'm thankful for a Savior. I'm thankful for a merciful God, amen, that gives me those chances every single day. We're going to sing about that Savior, sing about our thankfulness, just continue to worship Him tonight, amen. Oh, one dream to the north. I'm wanting a place to hide. Get up, 
get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Breathe. 
bow down before your throne. See your face, I'll cry out, because you're holy, holy, holy are you, Lord.
tonight. Pastor is getting ready to preach. All across this place, hands raised towards heaven. Come on, you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. There is no one like you, Jesus. with seven seals and I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals and no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look in it and I began to weep loudly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look in it And one of the elders said to me, Weep no more. Behold the lion of the tribe of Judah. The root of David has conquered so that he can open up the scroll and its seven seals. I've come to proclaim in this place, there is someone worthy. There is someone worthy. There is someone worthy. And his name is Jesus. What is a man? Come on, he's worthy in this place. He's worthy in this place. Unto the one that is worthy, he is worthy of our honor and our praise. Come on, let you clap your hands tonight, all your people. Shout with a voice of triumph. Raise your voices unto him tonight. He is worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Will everybody say praise the Lord? Everybody shout, he is worthy. Amen. He is worthy. 
with all the honor, the glory, the praise that we can give him. Praise God. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, come let us glow, go into the house of the Lord. Amen. I don't know how you feel tonight, but when the presence of the Lord is in the house, anything can happen, right? Thank God, anything. Anything is possible when God is in the house. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, just let God have his way in your life right now. Thank God. What's that phrase we say, let, let go and let God? Man, there's a lot of needs in this house tonight. A lot of people that you represent in your family and your friend and your circle of influence that have needs. And Amen. And if we really understand what that means to let go and let God, it'll have an effect not only in your life, but it's going to affect the lives that are in your circle of influence and your family, right? Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, choir. Everything tonight's been wonderful. First Samuel, the 14th chapter. Yeah, praise God. First Samuel 14. Our beginning scriptures tonight will be verses 1 and 2, 6 and 8, 11 through 15. How many believes the Lord is fixing to come for his church. Hey Amen. There's nothing like him. I tell you, if you really have faith in that and you believe that, then we do what is necessary to, as the scripture said, make our election sure. Hey Amen. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. Somebody says, well, I'm not sure if I'm ready to go or not. That's a that's a pretty uh, scary statement. Amen. You need to make sure that you're ready to go. Don't, don't just kind of throw it up in the air and say, well, it's God's choice. Amen. We got a lot to do. And we got a lot that we can do to, to make sure that we're ready. Praise God. 1 Samuel 14, verses 1 and 2. Now it came to pass upon a day. That Jonathan the son of Saul said unto the young man that bare or carried his armor, Come and let us go over to the Philistines' garrison that it is on the other side. But he told not his father. Verse 2 says, And Saul tarried in the uttermost parts of Gibeah under a pomegranate tree, which is in Migron. And the people that were with him were about 600 men. Verse 6 says, And Jonathan said to the young man that bare his armor, Come and let us go over to the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us. For there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. And his armor bearer said unto him, Do all that is in thine heart, turn thee, behold, I am with thee according to thy heart. Then said Jonathan, Behold, we will pass over unto these men, and we, and we will discover, or we will show ourselves unto them. We're not going to hide. We're not going to crawl in the weeds. Amen. The mission is to let them see us. Verse 11. And both of them discovered or showed themselves into the garrison of the Philistines. And the Philistines said, Behold, the Hebrews come forth out of the holes where they had hid themselves. And the men of the garrison answered Jonathan and his armor bearer and said, Come unto us. What's that sound like? Does that sound like Goliath that day with David? Come on. Come on. Come up to us and we will show you a thing. A translation simply says, we will teach you something. Come on. Come on, have you ever done that before? Have you seen those fighters? They're going like this. Come on. Come on. Trying to lure you in. Come on in. We want to show you something. And Jonathan said to his armor bearer, come up after me. 
For the Lord hath delivered them into the hand of Israel. And Jonathan climbed up upon his hands and upon his feet and his armor bearer after him. And they fell before Jonathan and his armor bearer and his armor bearer and his armor bearer slew after him. In other words, the armor bearer had his back. In, in military terms, they would say they've got his six. Verse 14, and that first slaughter which Jonathan and his armor bearers made was about 20 men within, as it were, a half acre of land which a yoke of oxen might plow. And there was trembling in the host, in the field, and among all the people. The garrison and the spoilers, they also trembled, and the earth quaked, so it was very great trembling. Amen. There's something about the power of God. You know, when you, when you when, just, just for a moment here, when we were singing, you could feel the presence and the, and the power of God. You knew it was almost, it was tangible. You could feel it. You can't see it, but you can feel it. Amen. It's like the wind, when the wind blows. You don't see it blowing at you, but you see the results of it. You see things blowing around, trees bending, your hair moving. And you see what, 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 what is capable in the wind. I'm telling you right now, when the Spirit and the power of God begins to blow and move in the house, anything can happen. Amen. So I want us to pray together right now. Put your Bibles down, raise your hands, and let's pray and ask God to minister to us through His Word. Oh Lord God, we ask you once again. Amen. You are the one. Amen. That can move into this place and change our hearts and, 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 and give us something to look forward to. Uh, amen. In our relationship with you. Uh, I pray, God, that every heart would be melted before you, that every ear would be open to hear your word. Lord God, as you challenge us tonight, I pray that we will accept the challenge uh, and be ready to step out onto the battlefield uh, of this life. Uh, amen. Through the authority and the spirit of your word. And with power begin to proclaim your good news to this world. Not worrying about the enemies of our soul. The enemies of this world that would encompass us, would come about us. Amen. But yet we would also realize that you are greater. Amen. Because you are in us. So God bless us tonight, I pray in Jesus' wonderful name. Clap your hands to the Lord one more time before you're seated. He is worthy tonight. Folks. I'm not going anywhere else right now. Amen. Clap your hands with all your might. Lift your voice unto the Lord. Come on, give him some praise tonight. He's worthy. Come on, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. Hallelujah. We give you honor, we give you praise. We give you glory. We lift you up, we magnify you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Another translation for verse 7 simply says, And his armor bearer said to him, Do all that is in your heart. Turn yourself, and, I, and here am I with you according to your desire. Amen. We need to guard against a lot of preaching and teaching becoming just an eloquent oratory or speech. A man basically uh, skilled or eloquent in public speaking. I've been moved by a lot of speeches. I've been moved by a lot of sermons. And, and I thought, boy, that was great. That was a great thought. That was a great message. Or that was a great uh, uh, speech that was given here or there. Amen. But, but I've come to the realization, uh, amen, that no matter what's preached or taught, uh, amen, if it's not moving uh, the people, if our hearts are not moved, uh, amen, then we're failing at our job. Because it's the Word. It's not how we speak it. Uh, it's with the anointing uh, and the power that it is spoken. That's what changes our hearts. 
That's what changes minds. And we need to guard against just kind of listening to the preacher, amen, or listening to the evangelist, or listening to the teacher, amen, and going out the same way that we came in, amen. The Word is preached, and when it's preached, the goal must be that it moves people. It moves them, Brother Howard, in their soul, in their spirit. Amen. Something, amen, begins to rise up. And they say, we can do this. We can overcome. Amen. It might just me and my brother or my sister. Amen. But if we have each other's back, we're going to see a move of God. Amen. We're going to see the power of God. And people are going to come to an altar of repentance and give God their heart. If you believe that tonight, clap your hands and praise Him. We need relevant preaching in this day and time. Amen. Notice this. There is a will of God, I believe, for every service. Turn to your neighbor and say every service. That means when we come to a Wednesday night Bible study, uh, we come with the purpose of, I've got, there's a word of God for me tonight. When we come on a Sunday morning, uh, we come with purpose. Uh, we understand the Word of God is going to be preached, and, and I want to receive the Word of God. When we come on a Sunday night, the same thing. Uh, when it's an evangelistic service, uh, the same thing. Uh, when an evangelist was with us, uh, a man, a missionary service, whatever it might be, uh, we need to understand uh, that God has a will for any and every service. We don't need preaching that just pleases people. We need preaching that heals. We need preaching that delivers. We need preaching uh, that moves the hearts of people, that changes people's lives. Amen. That's what it's all about. That's where you and I come into the picture. Amen. Because if we uh, will put our lives out on the altar before God and say, God, touch my heart, touch my life, uh, that means every time I get into the presence of God and I begin to promote the presence of God and I begin to worship Him, uh, amen, I'm setting the table for the Spirit of God to begin to move uh, and work in somebody's life. Verse 7 of our text is a unique statement about an equally unique person. Amen. I'm talking about the armor bearer. His spirit is manifested in what he says with his mouth. In response to what Jonathan, a man, his master had told him. You know, if you say to somebody, amen, will you pick that up? And they say, I'm not going to do it. It reveals their spirit. You can tell. Why? Because of the manifest, manifested, that what's manifested in his word is his spirit. Don't look at me like I'm, I've gone off my rocker tonight. If you've had kids, you understand what I'm talking about. About five or six, they're going to say, Simply that, you know, I, I've heard this before. You know, you got kids around. You know, have you ever, you know, been, have you ever watched somebody else's kids or in the church you try to tell a little kid to stop running or, or whatever like that? And sometimes they'll pop off with something like, You ain't my daddy. When I grew up, I got snatched up by a few people who will remain nameless. My mom and dad didn't mind that because they'd like, you know what? Uh, he probably done something that he shouldn't have done. It's the way it used to be. Everybody say used to be. It's not that way anymore. You got a fight on your hands anymore. Don't get quiet on me tonight. Hey Amen. Understand it. Rebellion. The Bible says rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. Rebellion is something that doesn't need to be in our heart. Rebellion will bring you down. Rebellion will stop you dead in your tracks. Rebellion will stop a move of God in your life. 
Because you're thinking, you know what, well, I don't want to do that or I'm not going to do that. Boy, that's a dangerous territory to be in when you say I'm not going to do something, especially when it's something that has to do with the kingdom of God. Everybody's camped over here under the pomegranate tree. Amen. King Saul, 600 men. Here they all are. Amen. They're garrisoned with him. And he's not worried about what's going on. He knows that those 600 guys will take care of him. We do that a lot of times. We do that a lot of times. Protect ourselves. We want to protect ourselves. Amen. Saul is in a position where he can just lay back, eat the fruit and all the food and take him a nap. He's not going to fight. Not right now. You see, you've got to understand the, the backdrop of this story. You've got to understand a few chapters before, amen, when Samuel said, hey, I'll be there and at an appointed time. And he wasn't there. And Saul chose. In fact, he thought, you know what? It's sacrifice time. And so I felt like I needed to offer the sacrifice. And, and Samuel's like, that's not your place. That's not your job. You disobeyed the command of God. And so therefore, there's one that's coming, uh, amen, that's going to be uh, the leader of Israel. You have failed, uh, amen, in obeying the command, uh, amen, and the word uh, of God. And no doubt, here in this situation, uh, a few chapters later, under the pomegranate tree, something uh, in Jonathan was stirred up. He was tired uh, of just doing nothing. Everybody say nothing. Do you enjoy, turn to your neighbor and say, do you enjoy doing nothing? Now most of us are going to probably say yes. Because we're thinking about it in a different, in a different instance. Uh, you know, you like that day of nothing. All right? You like that time to yourself or whatever. But in the scripture and in the story, amen, we got to look at it from this standpoint. Jonathan realized there's an enemy, amen, that's encamped against us. And it's not the will of God that we stay camped out under a pomegranate tree, uh, napping and eating and just letting them do and prepare for the battle and us do nothing to prepare ourselves. In Jonathan's spirit was embodied what should be in all of us that says we're not satisfied to just sit around and wait for the enemy to come to us. Amen. We're going to take the fight to them. And Jonathan doesn't take the whole army. He don't need the whole army. He just leans over and begins to carry on a conversation uh, lightly whispering to his armor bearer, let's get up and go over to the Philistine garrison. He didn't even know for sure whether it would work or not. You say, well, pastor, how do you know that? Scripture says that it may be that God will work for us. God didn't tell me. Amen. But I'm tired of just sitting here under the shade trees and doing nothing. It may be that the Lord will work for us. So let's go show ourselves to the Philistines and let's just see what happens. Folks, let me stop and tell you right now, sometimes you gotta step out, uh, amen, in faith. Uh, amen, believe in the word of God. You may have not heard anything. Uh, you may have not seen anything. Uh, but sometimes you gotta step out in faith uh, and just know that God has your back. I like that spirit. But I also like the spirit of the armor bearer. Amen. The armor bearer. The armor bearer did not say, Hey, Jonathan, have you thought about asking your father? What would your dad say? You better ask him. Amen. He said that nobody could go anywhere unless they got his permission. Amen. He's taking a nap and he wants everybody else to. Uh, we all just need to chill right now, Jonathan. Uh, why are you getting all worked up? No. He didn't go through that. He just said, that sounds great to me. Let's do it. Let's do it. Whatever you say. Amen. You know the story. They get over into the enemy territory where they were hanging out. And Jonathan said, let's go up in these hill. Amen. And let's discover. Let's show ourselves. Let's let them see us. Let's see what they have to say. Right. It's almost like they went up there, Brother Howard, and said, hey, guys, here we are. Right. Amen. What? 
Here we are over here. Another translation also says in verse 7, And his armor bearer said to them, Do all that is in your heart. Turn yourself, and here am I with you according to your desire. In other words, he was saying, turn around and look at my heart. My heart is just like yours. It's like David, like I said of David, he has a heart after God's own. Amen. He is a man after God's own heart. Amen. He had the eye of God. Turn around. Look at my heart, Jonathan. It's just like yours. Let's go and do it. Problem in his mind, if we die, we die. But we've died trying. Two. Two. Well, the Bible talks about one can put a thousand to flight. Two can put two, ten thousand to flight. You do the math. Right? Come on, somebody say praise the Lord. God is able to do whatever we are capable of asking him for. The church in our day and time has a lot of setbacks and a lot of maladies. Many churches are often choked and clogged because of the things like a lack of inspiration or no cooperation or lack of finances or a lack of faithfulness of time or living for yourself. Or even maybe having a humanistic viewpoint. In other words, one of self-preservation. Looking out for number one. Float your own boat. Cross your own seas. Everybody for themselves. But let me ask you this. Or let me say this. Feeding on carnality instead of spirituality is a death sentence in a spiritual man's life. You cannot type carnality into your spiritual computer and come out with spirituality. It's impossible. Everybody say impossible. You can't do it. I think that, that, that among all of of, 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 of the church world, the, the worldliness and uh, among all the selfishness uh, and the things that really haunt the church, nothing is so devastating to the church like when we, you and I, have no vision. The people perish because of lack of vision. Most of the time, God gives vision to the church throughout its ministry, throughout the word of God. And in this society where everybody likes and wants to be independent, you can't tell me what to do. Attitude. Hey man, you see it. Just listen. Prick your ears open. You'll hear it in different sections of society. People cry it out. You can't tell me what to do. Amen. I wonder what that spirit's going to be like when they have to stand before God and they have to answer for the decisions that they made throughout their lives. Don't be fooled by the text of the world. Don't be fooled by the conversation of the world. Amen. Don't be lulled in to their belief system. Amen. Don't, don't, don't you start thinking like them. Don't, don't start talking like them. Amen. Don't start believing like them. Amen. Because that's not going to save you. Amen. You got to get the armor on and you got to go up in that battle and you got to fight that battle with the confidence that God is with you. And if he is with you, amen, who can stand against you independence only leads to bondage it's amazing they all say the church is in bondage no, the church has been freed we, 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 we've got liberty it's the world that's in bondage it's a world that's in bondage. They're bound by, 
by all the cares of life and bound by, by the, the uh, drugs and the alcohol and the promiscuous lifestyles. Uh, that's what they're bound by. Amen. They fight to get free, but they can't. But I'll tell you this. Uh, no, you cannot get free uh, of yourself. But when you come in the presence of God and you repent of your sins uh, and you're buried in His name uh, and you're filled with His Spirit, uh, you become a new creature in Christ. Uh, amen. The old things are passed away. All things become new. Uh, amen. You uh, have been set free uh, by the power blood of Jesus Christ we want to be separated from anything else any other source or from a position of being responsible to that's what independent is or for anyone else for anything which means that we hold and maintain the right in our own minds to not have to be told anything at all and, and the sad thing about it is amen we we we, we have to understand that it starts in the home and then it, then, it, then, it, then it begins to go through the school system and then they get out and, and, and they kind of face the real world and when they face the real world, they, they adopt the attitudes of the real world that says, you can't tell me. You know the routine. Five and six. They start back talking and and then all of a sudden they become a teenager. Yeah. All I got to say to all y'all that's got kids that are young right now, wait till they become a teenager. I want to be a fly on the wall of Brother and Sister Christian's house when those three boys become teenagers. And they come home one day and there's a hole in the wall. And they look at that and they say, who did it? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, why are you looking at me for, Dad? I didn't do it. And all y'all, you know, it's just the way life is. When they get to that age, it's like nobody can tell me what. To, man, I was so mad sometimes. Hey man, when 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 I when I had kids that were teenagers, I tell you what, I'm talking about man. I had sometimes I just had looked like I I felt like I had the wrath of God getting ready to be. Just I felt like man, I'm fixing to smoke somebody right now. Problem was I couldn't catch him. But we see, we understand that it's a, it's a phase of life that they go through and hopefully uh, they come through and realize that, that it's that mentality that doesn't really work even in the real world because it always causes tension. But yet in the spiritual world, uh, we must not have that attitude uh, that's an independent attitude that says, uh, you can't tell me what to do. Uh, I'm gonna do what I feel is right within my own spirit. Well, I got news for you, honey. You go ahead and follow that pathway. But you will find yourself at odds with God. Come on, somebody say praise the Lord. Spirits do not maintain their innocence. They know very little at a very uh, young age. Spirits are busy feeding on the human spirit until like a leech they fasten on. Uh, and then when they grow fast, uh, they also they allow the bloodsuckers into your spirit. The church suffers from a lack of vision because a lot of times we don't like God's plan. I'll stand here and be honest with you. I don't always know God's plan. I just know if I follow his word, it will keep me in that. It will keep me in the way. And God's plan will work itself if I follow it. Right? Right? Amen. You work the plan. Everybody say work the plan. Amen. The anointing, uh, amen, is the choosing of God. Not the choosing of man. David became king uh, because he was chosen of God. Saul became king uh, because the people cried out for a king. We want to be like everybody else. 
Let me stop and tell you right now, church, uh, don't ever adopt that attitude uh, that you're not like, well, we're not like everybody else. Uh, it would sure be nice to be like everybody else. No, 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 no. Don't, don't ever just say, no, I don't want to be like everybody else. Uh, this is what God's called me to do. Uh, this is what God's put in me. Uh, this is what God has placed in my heart. This is a vision I've got, uh, and I'm going to believe it. Uh, I'm going to stand firm on it. Think about it. When God begins to send a man, he tells you the vision that God has given him. Amen. His vision may not be the same vision as others. Amen. That just kind of felt like, well, the vision here is pretty good, man. I'm just kind of laying in the shade and chilling out. It's a pretty good vision. But that wasn't the will of God. It's the will of man, not the will of God. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. The spirit of this man was, I'll carry your sword. I will carry your shield. I will carry your suit of armor. The problem was that Israel was so beat down that she was not a warring nation. Amen. They were a nation of shepherds. They were a nation of farmers. Uh, amen. They were people, uh, you know, that, that didn't have weapons. They, you read, go, go back another chapter. I'll tell you the plowshares and uh, all those different things that they begin to sharpen. Uh, amen. There were no, they, they didn't have blacksmith. Uh, they only had two swords in all of Israel, and that was Jonathan and his dad Saul. And the kings of princes of that day had armor bearers to carry their armor because it was so heavy to carry and for them to be able to give orders and plan strategies at the same time. And it's Jonathan's armor that he was carrying for Jonathan. Where does vision come from? God gives it to leadership. He gives it to us that are overseers. and Notice this. God told Moses what to do and the children of Israel followed through the word that was given to Moses. That's the way God ordained it. That's the way God ordered it. God showed his ways to Moses. That's why it's so important to listen to the preached word of God. When somebody's ministering the word of God, open your ears, open your hearts. Amen. Let that word begin to marinate uh, your soul. Let it, begin, let it come in. Uh, amen. There's, amen. Because there's a good chance you're not going to know what God is trying to say uh, if you're not listening to the word of God. I've heard people say, well, I can get it for myself. Mm -mm. No, you won't. Here's the deal. Go back in the Old Testament. Remember Korah. Remember Dathan. Remember Abram. Because God's plan is to move and speak through its leaders. And when they decided to have it their way, they suffered the judgments. Look, in this last day, you and I, we have to have our face set like a flint. We have to say, you know what? Amen. God's before me. Uh, amen. There's nothing that's going to stand in my way. Uh, amen. And begin to come together as brothers and sisters in the Lord and say, we can fight this battle. Amen. I've got your back. Uh, let's go into this battle and let's see God do something great. Do you believe that? Clap your hands and praise Him. Come on. We need men. And we need women a, a vision. Everybody shout vision. We got to learn the spirit of the armor bearer. Amen. That simply says, yes, if you believe it, I believe it. Amen. And if you go into battle, I will be with you and I will fight with you. Amen. You don't know his name. Amen. You don't know his name or where he's from. Amen. But when you bring people of like precious faith together, amen, something begins to move. Don't ever adopt the philosophy or the understanding or that I don't have to listen if I don't want to. Here's what I've found out in my life when it comes to the Word of God. And you probably felt the same thing. 
How many times have you been reading the word of God and all of a sudden your spirit is smitten? Right? How many have ever read the word of God before and all of a sudden it's almost like somebody takes a tube before and smacks you between the eyes? Man, it doesn't feel good. Amen. It doesn't feel good. I was in my car here yesterday and all of a sudden, amen, in that car, I was listening to the radio, listening to some good music, and all of a sudden, Brother Howard, it was like the presence of the Lord came in that car, and I felt like, man, you're an idiot. You say, why did you feel that way? Because, you know, with things that are going on in the world today, my mind gets so caught up in that stuff. And sometimes God's just got to come down. And I'm just talking personally, okay? I'm just talking personally. Sometimes God's just got to come down and simply just say, hey, I've got this. Don't worry about it. Yeah. It's almost like he comes down to my car and just says, look, listen, there's not a th- no matter how loud you yell at the radio, there's not anything you can do about it. And then sometimes I'll be thinking, I don't know what's in people's mind. How can they live that kind of a lifestyle? What is this all about? And I'm thinking about that. And God just almost like, he's like, I'm taking, I'm going to take care of it. And then I start thinking like, you know what? People are refusing God now. But somewhere down the road, they're going to want mercy. And mercy can only be found on this side. After the rapture, the church is taking place. Look, I, 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 you know, I, you, you got to understand. Hey Amen. We need that vision in this day and time, and that prayer, and that warring in the spirit. Hey Amen. I don't want my son my daughter and my grandkids lost. I don't want your kids lost or your grandkids lost. Amen. It's not just selfish about my family, but I ought to be praying for your family. I ought to be praying for your friends. Amen. We ought to get together and challenge ourselves. Amen. Make that list and simply say, God, help me to get on the battlefield for lost families, not just my family, but your family. We need men of men and women of vision. We need to have the spirit of an armor bearer. First Corinthians four, verse one says, "Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God." In other words, we are the caretakers. We are the custodians of the will of God and the vision of God. We got to hold on to it because we're going to have to give an account. You go on down to verse 2 and 4. Moreover, it's required in the stewards uh, that a man be found faithful. You men that missed the men's retreat this weekend. Talk to Brother Singer. You get online. You need to listen to those messages. Don't get quiet on me. You need to listen to those messages. Because I'm telling you, they will move and stir your heart about being faithful to the things of God. Amen. Not letting the world turn your, your, your thoughts and your eyes and, 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 and start listening to the voice of the world. No, your family cannot afford for you as a husband, as a father to change course when it comes to the things of God. Verse 3 says, but with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. Verse 4, for I know nothing by, by myself, yet I am not hereby justified, but he that judgeth me is the Lord. On down to verse 6 and 7, he said, and these things, brethren, I, ha- I have in a figure transferred transfer to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written. Amen. That no one of you be puffed up for one against the other. For, for, for who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hast not received it? The scriptures depict an attitude that says, I'm going to be my own boss. 
Amen. God's challenging us tonight because God wants to give us a great revival. God wants to set the table. Amen. Amen. The, the building that's coming. Uh, amen. Whatever. But that you can have a building and not have the Spirit. I would much rather have the Spirit than a building. So our vision has to be uh, the building's coming. Why? Because we want to do something great for the kingdom of God. Not just in our English-speaking church, uh, but in our Spanish-speaking church. Uh, amen. And whatever other nationality that God, amen, gives us down through the, the years if He tarries. we got to prepare ourselves for a revival, for a move of God. Sometimes we need to yank our up, ourselves up by our own bootstraps and say, God, here am I. Amen. You know, sometimes, folks, you just need to go to God and tell on yourself. Right? How many have ever felt guilty over something and you just told on yourself? Huh? Yep. Sometimes we need, no, 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 let's just stop for a moment. God knows it anyway. God sees it anyway. Amen. But you and I sometimes just need to say, all right, Lord, I goofed. I messed up. Amen. I'm just coming to you, Lord. I need your help. Amen. I need you to touch my life. Amen. Because I don't want to be in a situation, amen, to where I'm just trying to float my own boat. Amen. Trying to sail my own boat. Right? Amen. Because the winds of this world are going to blow. Amen. And if we don't have God, we have no rudder on that boat. And we'll just be tossed to and fro. Verse 8 says, Now ye are full. Now you are rich, you have reigned as kings without us. And I would to God ye did reign, that we also might reign in you. The Apostle Paul is saying, now, now, you act like you don't need us anymore. You're acting like you don't need us anymore. But I'm telling you, let's go verse 9, nine through 13. And I'm going to close, I'm, I'm just going to quit now. Verse 9 says, For I think that God has set forth us the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place and labor, working with our own hands, being reviled. We bless, being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and are the offscoring of all things unto this day can't help but kind of see the sarcasm in the, in the tone of Paul's voice as he addressed them in the scripture. But then I want to show you the trans, the transition in his writing to talk about relationship and its concern. You go down to verse 14 through 16 and he simply says this. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, ye have not, yet have, have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore, I beseech you, be followers of me. Folks, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. As we sit here at the moment in this place tonight, we have to realize that there is nobody else that's going to get us to where we want to go save Jesus Christ.
as men and women of the gospel, we have to do our best to follow Him so that people might be able to follow us. That's the challenge I want you to get tonight before you leave this place. What God wants to do for us is bigger than what we could even comprehend. But we have to decide if I want anybody following me, I have to learn how to follow Christ. Let's stand together. Let's stand together all over the house. Isn't the presence of the Lord awesome? His word entices us. I want to see things come to pass. I want to see, uh, hey man, the, the visions uh, realized. I want to see the power of God as it begins to move on people that you and I may have never expected to ever come to God. As we follow Christ. Amen. Jonathan's armor bearer found out that day the one he was following was a man of vision. And he stepped out and followed after him and said, I'm with you. If we live, we live. If we die, we die. We don't know how we're going to fare. But it's better than sitting under a pomegranate tree and do nothing so I challenge tonight as we open these altars would you come and just say God I'm coming to you tonight amen help me Lord in the areas of my life amen that I might fortify myself with your word that I might follow after your word that I might be strengthened in your word amen that I might feed on your word amen that my thirst will be met through your word amen that, that, that I will put myself in a place where people can follow after me Amen. They won't be fooled by it, but they'll know I'm following Christ and, and, and I, 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 I have experienced it for myself. Amen. That's the way. Come on. Just come and pray. Amen. They're going to sing a song. They're, we're going to be blessed tonight. Amen. We've been blessed already, but now God's wanting to do something great in each and every one of our lives from the youngest to the eldest. Let's let God begin to move. Amen. Let's let God begin to move in us right now. Come on. Reach out to the Lord right now. Raise your voice. Amen unto the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Minister to us, Lord. Minister to us, Lord. Trust the one who is greater than the soul. Hallelujah.